welcome everyone to our August town hall. Uh, we've got uh, about a 30 minute presentation or so and plenty of time to uh, ask and hopefully get to answer all of the questions that are that are asked. A bit of housekeeping up front. Um, I think by default folks are muted. Um, so if you have questions, we'd encourage you to type those into the chat window and we can scroll through those as we get to the end of the presentation. This town hall is being recorded and will be shared online for uh, folks that are unable to make it. The agenda is, uh, we'll cover a few, few introductions, um, we'll recap where we are with respect to uh, since last May when we, when we spoke in a town hall, cover the progress since May, um, outline a few of the next steps and then a question and answer period uh, followed by when we'll a schedule of our future meetings as well. So my name's Tim Bieri, current NACE president. Um, ordinarily, I'd be joined uh, on these calls with Sam Scatero, the SSPC vice president. Uh, unfortunately, Sam is impacted with the uh, hurricane coming up the East Coast, and uh, I guess a few others probably are impacted by that as well. Uh, so you get to listen to me for the entire presentation. Uh, we'll see how the questions go. We may have to hand off to uh, other folks that are listed here. The group that's listed here is makes up what we call the steering team uh, that is uh, overseeing the uh, integration teams. We'll, I'll lay that out for you as we get further into the presentation, how we're working and organized. I just recognize there's a lot going on in everyone's uh, personal and, and professional lives. There's, um, in addition to the, the pandemic that everyone is affected by, there's the hurricane that went up the whole eastern seaboard of the United States uh, and some other issues going on around the world. So uh, appreciate that this is a stressful time for everyone and, and we'll be respectful of your time um, as, as well. So we'll finish uh, on the hour. Just a, a timeline recap. Uh, again, conversations started back in 2018 about bringing the organizations together. The first half of this year, we brought a, a framework to both Board of Directors, Board of Governors for SSPC, Board of Directors for NACE, and they voted unanimously in favor to bringing it to the membership, uh, which voted in April. And we're in the second half of this year, which is all about integration, uh, making sure we have the legal documents in place for the organization going forward. Um, with an aim towards launching the new organization in early January of 2021. Now, not all the work will be completed in, in Janu by January of 2021. We recognize there'll be a lot of work uh, to continue throughout that year. Just a, a recap of the vote. Um, the votes went out electronically to uh, all of the all of our membership, respective memberships, uh, and we had over 10,000 votes uh, out of the combined total with nine out of 10 individuals uh, voting yes for bringing the organizations together. After the vote and what we did in our May update is shared with you that we had retained uh, McKinley advisors who specialize in helping nonprofit organizations do the type of activities that we're doing. So they're helping us facilitate the transition. We each board selected a transition team um, to help facilitate the combination. That transition team selected the new CEO for the organization, which was announced uh, in, in May. As, as Bob Chalker, uh, we identified initial merger working groups. I think those are, as we go forward, um, you'll see them called uh, uh, integration teams. And those are both staff focused and member focused. We'll spend a bit more detail on those in this presentation. 
And one of the things that we initiated early was bringing together a team to help with the brand development. And we'll spend a, we'll give you an update on where we stand with that. So since the town hall in May, we defined our structure and the way we want to work. So we have the transition team, again, which is made up of a balance of SSPC and NACE members. We defined uh, a meeting cadence. We created a steering team that I listed out in the first or second slide. Um, they meet on a weekly basis. The whole team meets on, a, the transition team meets on a bi-weekly basis and the integration teams that are doing really the heavy lifting here meet on a regular schedule. They're somewhat uh, unique to each of those teams, how they, how they choose to meet and, and run, the, run their work. Um, the staff leaders, uh, Bob and Bill, have defined the staff support team and assigned uh, responsible parties for helping the transition team, steering team, as well as the uh, integration teams work through the process and, and support and, and be part of those conversations as well. And this is a huge project and we are applying you know, project management principles as we work through this. So there are 12 member, blended member staff integration teams. There's one staff focused team. Again, we'll cover that uh, in a few minutes. There's about 100 people if you look at the number of members and staff that are actively engaged across these uh, 13 teams. We've defined their scope and scope or charter, what, the, what we're asking them to do. Uh, we held a, an all team uh, kickoff meeting similar to this where we walked through expectations and the, the way we expect things to work and, and some rough milestones for each of the teams. And progress to date has been largely focused on uh, information gathering and familiarization of the team members uh, with each other's or each organization's programs. So uh, NACE needs to get up, NACE members and staff need to to be able to dig in deep and understand the SSPC programs in that integration team's area of responsibility. And the same goes for SSPC staff and members understanding the NACE programs in that same area of responsibility. We outlined a standard process for the integration teams we completed the immersion meetings. Uh, we're right now in the data collection inventory uh, stage. Again, getting familiar, gathering information. Um, and it's not limited to what NACE and SSPC are doing. If there are best practice examples outside of the two organizations, we've encouraged those teams to look outside and bring in what the best way for the new organization would be. This is headed towards uh, those individual teams pulling together uh, recommendations. And those recommendations then would come to the transition team for their review and uh, endorsement or revise as necessary. So a lot of work, uh, the cadence is really pretty fast. I can tell you sitting in on meetings that uh, one week or every other week goes by very quickly in terms of the expectations of what's set out for the teams to accomplish in that, in that interval. And just a high level overview of the teams themselves. We have the uh, governance team, which is helping to define the governing documents, uh, First and foremost, they started out with the bylaws and articles of incorporation, working with the legal team. They're also going to be proposing what the new boards, the new board of directors will look like for both the new, new org 
and the New Org Institute organization. We have the chapters and section team, which is how are we going to bring together the local membership in the communities uh, and be able to um, perhaps shed the legacy challenges that have been faced in those uh, in our current mode of operation and look at options for geographic or topical uh, communities of interest for that's my term that's not what they're going to be called but you know how do we bring together people that have a similar interest the standards team is is busy going through and looking at how each organization develops standards uh, as you know nace is under or as you may know i should say nace has undertaken a huge um, redevelopment program in the standards and is in in the middle of of updating our standards process and we and taking a good look at how sspc does that work and hopefully come up with the best way forward for both organizations to bring that those programs together the publications team both organizations have print journals and electronic uh, publications so bringing those two di different publication uh, teams together and deciding what is the right path forward for the, the print media and, and electronic media. There's no secret to the color code here. It's just to uh, group like things with uh, like things uh, nicely on, on one page. Uh, certification deals with individuals. So we have both both organizations have certification schemes. So for individuals, that would be like the coding inspector program for NACE um, and the inspector program that runs for SSPC. It also will cover non-coding related certification schemes as well. The accreditation piece, uh, again, deals with NACE has the contractor accreditation program run through the Institute or NICAP and SSPC has their QP program. So looking at ways to bring the best of both of those together and moving forward with the right one, one direction. Uh, education, certainly some program overlap in the coatings space. Uh, SSPC has programs that NACE does not have. Uh, specific in the coatings arena. There's some overlap where, where they, there are similar programs. And then NACE has a whole catalog of non-coding related courses. And all of these have to come together into how we're going to run education in the future. And we identified uh, throughout this process that there is the need for a pre-professional or pre-professional and early career focused uh, activity and this is to develop what that might look like from early stem engagement through university uh, scholarships or through university engagement and perhaps uh, that's one path there's also um, you know apprentice type programs that aren't necessarily tied to university programs that allow people to enter the workforce and earn certification and and have a successful career path plotted through through NACE and SSPC, what the what the combined organization would look like. We have a group on conferences and events. Uh, both organizations run conferences and, and different events. So how do we harmonize and, and bring those together and look for uh, the right synergies and, and the planning. Of course, this year has been an especially uh, stressful year for the conference and events team dealing with how uh, the pandemic has moved across the globe and impacted the ability to have face-to-face -face events. So they have an added, added burden of, of understanding how to do remote conferences and events successfully. Uh, the next two are kind of back office um, pieces, but very important, how we're gonna bring the finances and accounting of the new organization together. Uh, 
different ways, different bookkeeping, different ways of accounting, uh, just different scope and scale between the two organizations as well. So doing that right. And uh, the IT infrastructure is the backbone of, of how uh, the two organizations operate. And it also includes the customer facing, or in this case, membership facing uh, programs, applications that uh, exist today or might exist in the future. The staff engagement team, which is, doesn't have any, uh, any members involved, um, is aimed at developing the, the structure and plans for integrating the staff. We've got uh, a global footprint of staff uh, with two, two big centers in Pittsburgh and Houston and determining how best to integrate those roles and, and teams is a big piece of the puzzle for the new organization. And the last team that's on here is uh, that, that is up and running today is the branding team. Uh, and that's to support the brand development process, come up with what our visual identity is going to be and how we're going to appear uh, in the market. And I'll spend uh, more time on on the brand integration team and, and share with you uh, what they've been up to and, and where they're headed in the, in the near term. So activities that have been completed, uh, the, the branding integration team uh, reviewed proposals from I think five or six different agencies, uh, narrowed that list down to three to have uh, detailed face-to-face -face meetings and selected um, one organization beyond definition uh, has been signed as the creative agency to help us through this process. Um, they've had a kickoff meeting. Uh, beyond definition has performed some detailed interviews with 15 members from each organization. And then they sent a survey to a wide variety of individuals associated with each organization. Um, we have about a 1% response rate back from uh, the surveys. So notionally 1,500 to 2,000 responses back, which is pretty reasonable for uh, that, that type of survey. So certainly trying to make effort to get feedback and input from our membership uh, and some of our external stakeholders to make sure we take that into account as we're developing uh, the new brand. They've also looked at the existing materials that NACE and SSPC have, and they held a branding workshop with the, with the brand team uh, and, the rep and representatives from beyond definition. So th this month we expect a, a report on kind of the last three or four bullets that are in the what's been completed bucket, and the brand team will be reviewing those and, and making uh, some decisions or, or providing some feedback to the transition team as we go forward. Uh, and in the near future is uh, developing uh, the items that are, are listed in the future slide. So we hope to have all of this uh, in place over the next, uh, some in the next 30 days, some in the next 60, some in the next 90 days. So working diligently to make sure we have a brand in place for when we launch the new organization. And this type of report is what each of the integration teams shares with the transition team on a, a rotating basis, but we hear from all of the teams uh, essentially every six weeks. And then if there's ad hoc or spe specific requests from a team that's not in that rotation with the transition team, we certainly take that in, in kind of our, any other business aspect of those routine meetings. So we're trying to get constant feedback and share feedback uh, both directions with uh, the, the teams and make sure that we're making good progress. And if breaking down barriers is a problem, we certainly work to, to try and do that as well. Uh, the legal team also made some uh, 
great progress. Um, we coordinated with the governance team and the transition team to develop and approve uh, articles of incorporation and bylaws. We drafted and executed the, what is called the definitive agreement, um, essentially the con contract that says we're going to go forward and do this. And that contract, the articles of incorporation, the bylaws, uh, and a whole slew of exhibits were required to be submitted to the Pennsylvania Office of the Attorney General for approval. So SSPC is organized or incorporated in, in Pennsylvania and their rules for nonprofits. Uh, the Attorney General wants to make sure that nonprofit societies, uh, organizations are dealt with appropriately, that uh, they're not being created or disbanded um, in a nonchalant fashion. So making sure that uh, nonprofits are treated appropriately is in the purview of Pennsylvania Attorney General. Uh, and we're waiting on that approval, I think notionally towards the end of October or beginning of October is when we expect to have a response from the Attorney General. Looking forward and give a window here of the next 30 days because we've scheduled out uh, town halls roughly uh, every month, it might be five weeks between this one and the next one, but notionally in the span between this town hall and the next town hall. Uh, we expect the integration teams to continue their research and discussions. They continue to report progress with the integration uh, team and if there are things that need to be approved, the integration team will take action. If there are challenges or, or risks to the delivery, we'll work through what the right approach is to keep things moving forward. Uh, the legal team, as I suggested, uh, waiting on the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General. Um, if there's questions or we need to respond in the interim, uh, they'll do that. And we also need to define uh, the wind down actions for each organization such that when we get to the end of the year and ready to stand up the new organization, uh, the existing organizations are dealt with appropriately in the, in the legal world. We've defined, I know it's been a while since our last town hall uh, in, in May um, we've defined uh, future town hall schedules, so that will be easier for folks to um, keep check on how progress is going. Uh, we're using social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, and others to, to inform folks when there is information that is worth uh, reviewing or, or updates to the progress. Uh, we'll share with you an email address. You can always reach out to uh, the team and ask questions or share feedback or uh, seek when the next update's going to be. And we have dedicated websites on both, or web pages on both uh, organizations' websites that keep uh, a running list of FAQ questions and press releases and um, access to these webinars as well, or links to these webinars, the recorded sessions. So the, the uh, future town halls uh, scheduled for September 2nd, uh, these QR, QR codes on the left will take you to the Zoom registration page for those specific uh, town halls. Uh, we have one scheduled for September and October. We plan to do one in November, just uh, finalizing the dates, um, be around mid-November and one scheduled in December. Um, we may, may add to this list, but uh, we'll try to keep to this list as a, as a minimum. Uh, the QR codes on, excuse me, those QR codes on the left are for the town halls. QR codes on the right uh, are, will take you to the NACE webpage or, the, or SSPC webpage where the updates are being posted, um, where you can 
type in that address or you can search from the, the web pages, uh, the home page as well. And I think that brings us to uh, the question and answer period. Uh, the email address, uh, if you have questions that come up in between the town halls, uh, certainly encourage you to submit those uh, or feedback along the way from what you hear. Uh, they are read and reviewed and, and uh, we will re respond to them. So with that, um, see we've got some other folks from the steering team that are uh, on the call. I'll just kind of throw it open to Bob, Bill, if I missed anything that you think is important to include. And I've got some questions for you in the chat. So um, let me just see if uh, we can pull those up for you. All right. Um, will we be sending out an email registration for future town halls? Yes, we will. Uh, you should be getting those in your email. They'll also be available on our website. I'll just answer that one. Um, and Tim, the next one is, what does the transition stage look like for members and companies and when does it start? It's a uh, great question. Uh, I assume this relates to uh, individuals that are renewing under one or both organizations or if a company were to renew uh, a, a corporate type membership under one or both of the organizations. Um, that is a topic that is being um, actively discussed at the moment uh, inside of membership and inside of the transition team. We need to be able to um, identify what that transition looks like. Uh, what I can say is we will be, so I'm a member, I also work for a company that's a member and uh, I wanna make sure that both the individual and the corporate members are are treated fairly. If somebody, as an example, if somebody were to renew and then 30 days later we change the whole program, uh, we would look to protect or extend that type of renewal such that we're not um, adding to the burden of, of cost and dual memberships longer than we need to have. Okay. Um, Bob, do you want to try now? I think it looks like you're unmuted. No, I'm, I'm good. I was just, uh, he okay. had asked if we had anything to say and I did not have anything more to add. So, so okay. We're good. All right. Um, I have some questions that came through directly to me, uh, by email during this. So I'm just going to read those to you. They're not in the chat. Um, one question is, will standards be standardized? Will there be, will they be kept valid and will there be kind of new combined standards is, is uh, the gist of the question. Yeah, the, the, the standards team is, is trying to work through those very, that, that very question. So currently there are some standards that are co-branded between NACE and SSPC. Uh, there are also standards from both organizations that are, uh, let's say defined or reference in internal company processes and standards or even external uh, regulatory processes or, or regulations. So to change those quickly and without uh, careful consideration uh, just on the naming convention and structure is we're not doing that. Um, I think what the group is trying to tackle at the moment is how do standards get authored, balloted, and approved we will be tackling the other issue about how do we, when we bring that common process together, um, over time, I can see that we might phase uh, standards together and not have uh, individual standards. But that's a process that would have a timeline associated with it. And I don't think it will be uh, like a light switch where we would turn it on fast. Tim, this is Bob. Just to add to that, one of the challenges we face with standards is many of our standards are either referenced in regulations or in company policies 
by the title, either SSBC or NACE, and then whatever number letter after them. So we've got to be careful about all of that, recognizing we don't want to, because of a name change, disqualify a standard. So we've got to just be really careful about how we make that all happen. Uh, and then the next question we have is when will the process be complete for both organizations as a legal entity for registrations in local sections? Elisa, this is Bob. I'll grab that one. Um, just to walk through the timing. So the next step from a legal standpoint is approval of the Pennsylvania Attorney General of the merger. We don't see any issue there. We expect that to happen. And that, that's needed because SSBC is incorporated in Pennsylvania. Um, we expect that in the September, October timeframe. And then we expect to form the legal entity, new entity of new org, whatever it's called by January. Once we have that done, we'll be able to start the process on the local level and our global team will be working with you. I, I think that came from Elvis uh, in, our, in the Middle East. Elvis will be um, you know, working with Gossam and others in the Middle East and our teams around the world to move each of those entities into place um, and get them set up. In the meantime, we will also maintain the existing structure so that we don't leave anybody hanging in the process. Okay. And now we have a, a um, certification question. If you have a coding inspection level one certification through NACE, how will the certification coincide with SSPC? Again, that's what the certification team is being tasked with doing is how do we um, bring the best of each of those programs together um, and how will we transition to what a new, what the new scheme will look like. And, and both of those uh, certifications may appear or may continue for a period of time as, as we work through that. Again, these, none of these decisions that we've been talking about to date are like uh, light switches, right? They're more like dimmer switches. You have to turn down one as you turn up the other. They're not, uh, it's not binary on or off. So uh, we recognize uh, people that have certifications that have made investments uh, and or derive income from having those certifications. We want to ensure that we're doing the minimal disruption that we can and protect those certification schemes uh, as we go forward. Okay. Um, and just uh, before I go to the next one, a follow-up to that one um, was on, was by email, was um, when will the changes take effect um, for, for certifications? I think again, the, the, all of these teams have just started uh, over the past four weeks, have started meeting, started getting familiar with the strengths, um, uh, perhaps opportunities with each other's programs and are looking at how they will blend them going forward. I expect in the future town halls, we will be able to share progress in from some of these other teams. Today we spoke about branding. They had the earliest start. But as we go through uh, the next several town halls, I expect we'll have more details and granularity, I guess, for folks that are interested in how, they, how it affects them, uh, which is uh, certainly understand, it affects me as well. So we wanna make sure that uh, we're doing it uh, in a thoughtful fashion that, that maintains both the brand and the investment that folks have made. Um, and then someone inquired about uh, paying dues. Uh, will it be one combined, you know, dues, or will they have to pay to both organizations? So, the, you know, one or I think one. I'll, I'll let Bob take that one. Yeah, it, it will eventually be one dues um, that you'll pay, and that's being worked on. They've got a proposal that's being prepared. We should have something um, in the next several, I'll say, couple months um, to get that. Uh, put together. There's a process that we are going through with all of these changes for approval that is made of the uh, working through the teams uh, as and making sure that we're looking at all aspects of anything that we do. So 
there is the work of the ad hoc teams to create the proposals, but then they go through a very extensive vetting process to make sure that they are the right proposals. So there is a time that it's going to take to get to some of the decisions on these. And that's one that it's at the forefront of our work. It's one of the early things we're working on, um, but there's still an approval process we have to go through. I saw that somebody said, I hope the dues are not cost prohibitive to single consultant organizations. We do have very much to have a plan to assure that there is different um, options for both individuals and companies to gain the benefits. And we're also being very sensitive to what the current structure is for both SSPC and NACE and making sure we put something together that um, I believe would be acceptable no matter what size of a company you are or whether you're a, an individual member and, no, and hopefully with enough variability or options that no matter what your needs are, because that's, that's the one thing we found in our research is there's a multitude of reasons why both individuals and companies engage with us. And so you can't just design one benefit model. There's got to be multiple. Okay. Um, let me just pull. Uh, there was a question that came in that I missed here. Um, oh, it was as an international member from our SSBC Columbia chapter, we'd like to cooperate more actively during the merge process. Please let us know what is the most effective way to do so. Elise, I'll, I'll grab that one as well. So what, I, what we're encouraging for now, uh, because we are still working on what the local organization, the chapter sections, what that model will look like. Well, I'm calling them local communities because we probably will not use either the term chapter or sections in the future. Um, that work's still being done, but there is absolutely no reason why you cannot reach out to your peer. Um, uh, the person that asked said they were SSPC related. Um, reach out to your NACE counterpart, um, have a joint activity, a joint meeting. We're encouraging that. And that is starting to happen in different places. It's, this is the time to get to know each other and understand what you're doing locally, hopefully find opportunities for synergy and, and being able to work together. Um, but I think that's a, um, a, an important first start or first step is taking the time to get to know each other and engage. And then from there, we'll, over time, we'll have more direction specifically on what the structure will be and the tools and everything that you need. Well, a good first step is to have a joint SSPC NACE section meeting or chapter meeting in your local area or a luncheon or golf outing or something that brings your people together locally. And then um, Tim, this one, I think we have a slide for someone's asking if we can disclose the voting results from the, um, from way back when. So if you, I think that was slide four or five. And while we're pulling, oh, here we go. So for. Yeah, these, uh, so these results were shared uh, in the previous town hall as well. Um, um, these two snippets, um, one comes from the SSPC side, the other one comes from the NACE side. So the aggregate uh, number there is uh, 10,000 uh, individuals voted, round numbers, and it's, I think, 88 or 89 percent if you did the math. So I did take some uh, liberty and rounded that to 99 out of 10. Uh, but those, those are the results uh, that were Thanks. Uh, next question is, would the certifications potentially be reissued under the new branding and legal identity or entity? I, I would say eventually, yes, they will be reissued under the new branding. Exactly how, that's still to be determined. But uh, again, we have the same issue with certification that I mentioned with standards, that, that those certifications are all, often referenced by the name, either NACE or SSPC, and we don't want to lose that. So we're, we'll be working on a strategy for the naming of certification. Okay. And then the next question is, is the plan to still have a physical presence in both Houston and Pittsburgh, any other locations? So yes, the plan is to continue to keep both locations. That hasn't wavered from the beginning. 
uh, both headquarter locations. Uh, in fact, I even with COVID-19, I had the opportunity, this is Bob Chalker speaking, I had the opportunity to get to Pittsburgh to visit their facilities. Um, so got to spend a little bit of time with a few staff members uh, in the lockdown, uh, properly socially distancing. Uh, beyond those two facilities, uh, NACE actually has a, uh, several uh, offices around the world um, and even in the US. We have a small publishing office in San Diego that's responsible for our magazines. And then we have offices in China, Brazil, the UK, um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but anyway. Uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, thank you. And we have a training center in the UAE. So um, yes, there are multiple facilities and, and right now we plan on maintaining all of those. And in fact, potentially expanding one of, one of the values of the merger is the synergy that we gain being able to effectively use our resources. And we do recognize the value of having feet on the ground in regions uh, particularly where we have a large number of members and activities. So I, I could see us beginning to expand um, our location. Okay. Uh, and then this is um, SSPC and NACE are great brand names in each area, coatings and corrosion cathodic protection respectively. I believe the integration team will keep this in mind, but just out of curiosity, will you consider to keep both? It would be very hard either way. Well, we're certainly, uh, I think, consider, yes, that's part of the, the work that the branding team and our branding agency is, is working through with us. Uh, it is possible, and I think the analogy that has been used before is you could have, um, if you thought about a hotel chain like Marriott, it has a lot of brands that sit beneath Marriott, um, Spring Hill Suites, JW Marriott, uh, Fairfield, uh, so you could still see a new organization name and brands that uh, sit beneath that organization. There is tremendous brand equity in, in both of them, uh, and we would not want to lose that um, going forward. Okay, next question is, how many individuals and companies are members of both organizations? Uh, that is a great question. It's a moving, it's a moving target, uh, you know, because people renew and, and come and go uh, uh, monthly. I'd say in round numbers, it's 36,000 members for NACE. Uh, I'll look if Bob has to, to chastise me. And I don't know the number of uh, corporate level um, companies that have signed up for the various corporate. And I guess, uh, Bill, if you can speak to SSPC. Sure, roughly on, from SSPC, individual members, we have a little over 10,000 and corporate members uh, over 900. Bob, any better numbers for NACE than? We're, we're right about that uh, 900 mark. Okay. Okay, uh, and then someone is wondering when the major miles, can we share when the major milestones of the integration plan are to happen? Well, I think the next major milestones, um, uh, probably the biggest milestone that is out there looming is uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General's um, ruling or, or approval of, of how we're going to move forward. That would be a big milestone. We expect that in the uh, early October timeframe. However, we're, uh, you know, they're operating under different rules now with COVID-19. We're operating differently than, than how uh, we might have operated in the past. So uh, we recognize that there's a little subjectivity or a little window around when we expect that answer. Um, each of the teams have different milestones. And what I'd say is the best way to, to report that is through these town halls where we can dive a bit deeper into which teams have, have accomplished or we're ready to report where we're headed with uh, the individual subject matter. Uh, and I have an inquiry. I think there, uh, I think the gist is they're wondering if we will continue to have individual memberships. Definitely, yes. 
we are we are still both individual membership organizations and that would continue into the future. All right. Uh, any, I guess, if there's any other questions, post them now. We can give it a minute. Uh, but otherwise, that's the end of the, the questions in the chat. And if anyone has questions after this that come up, please feel free to uh, email those in. request for uh, including a three month look ahead on the implementation plans. There we go. We'll, we'll work to, uh, we'll work to do that. We're rapidly coming up at the end of, um, you know, some ma major milestones just in terms of the organization and uh, it's not too much further out that three months ahead is the end of the end of the calendar year and the launch of, of the new organization, but uh, uh, certainly understand the desire to under to know more about the major milestones. So we'll see what we can do to put forward some a, a bit of a schedule for you. Okay. With that, I don't see any other new questions. One more. Um, uh, some people are inquiring about uh, is it SSPC PCI equivalent to NACE CIP? So that, that, that's a really interesting question, right? So that is one of the things the team is doing is really evaluating what is not only what is the content of the two certification or the two education programs, but also what do the uh, certification exams and processes test for. Um, I would say today the chances are that there are differences between the two of them. I'm not an expert. We have teams that are working on that, but part of the process that we've asked each of the teams to go through is to really take the time to understand both programs thoroughly and identify where they're the same and where they're different. And that, that, that's not just about certification. That's about every aspect of what we do. Um, and so that work's happening right now. That's, you know, remember these teams have been together for uh, three or four weeks. The first part of that is getting to know each other, setting a work plan, uh, getting um, materials and resources available. And, and they're just now starting into really sitting down and doing the necessary comparisons of the, of the programs. So my guess is there are differences and we'll have to find a way to, to deal with that and address that. Okay, so now we have a lot of questions coming in. Yeah, <laughs> so. you announced last call and uh, they started, started streaming in. Yes, um, so question about our conferences, any feeling yet how long the two conferences will continue or, um, as they're already scheduled out far in advance? Our conferences team are work, working very quickly to integrate the two. Uh, one, because of the merger, two, because of the impact of COVID-19. Right now, our plan is to have two conferences in 2021. It's too late, if, if we are able to have conferences, and again, that's somewhat at the um, mercy of what happens with COVID-19, but we, for 2021, we would have both conferences. We are now work, we are negotiating and working with convention centers and hotels and city groups to see if we can't merge the two together as quickly as possible and good progress is being made. So stay tuned, it's gonna take a while. You probably won't have an answer before next year, uh, but we are working to merge into one conference as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, and then what will be the entity to obtain certifications? Is it NACE or SSPC? It is neither, it will be Newark. At, at some stage, Right. There will be a transition to certifications under the new organization. But again, this is uh, um, not binary. It's, it's this today and that tomorrow. It, there will be a, a transition plan timeline laid out for how that happens. But eventually you would renew certification under the new organization. 
Uh, is the integration team or SSPC or NACE considering the negative economic impact on individual membership and certification fees as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic on globally, on the global economy without putting stress on members uh, in the strategies or our plan? Uh, I would say yes. I'm not sure how to answer that question, but yes, the impact of COVID-19 COVID on our members, our customers, our uh, the companies that and, and the individuals, as well as NACE and SSPC, quite frankly, we, we've had our own set of stress through this process. So we are working hard to make it as, um, uh, to make our products and programs as accessible and affordable as we possibly can. Okay. Um, and if anyone's having CIP, three uh, appear, uh, do they need to reevaluate or um, do anything differently with the exam process? Is there any change there? There, I don't think we know enough at this point. It's too early. Okay, uh, and then um, there's a suggestion here, we go. Um, do you recommend everyone keep their certifications current in the interim? Absolutely. Okay, and then will the cost of uh, certification, will it be reduced or the same? Will it change? It's probably too early to tell. I mean, one of the things we are operating under is to do no harm to the members. So I think we're going to do everything we can to manage those costs, but again, it's it's too early to tell. I, I don't see any reason why uh, the costs should change or will change. Okay. Um, would New Org consider future growth through a similar M and A product process uh, to what we're doing now? For example, absorbing or merging with other organizations with significant mission overlap. Oh, I'll take that one. Um, I'm not sure this is the time and place to be asking about doing this again, because I think all of us are feeling the workload right now. But yes, we would. Um, you know, one of the things that's happening, I think, going to happen across industry and, and therefore across associations is the need to um, marshal and control and, and use resources wisely. And so I do think there will be some opportunities in the future for other organizations to join us or for us to join other organizations to better effectively serve our members in industry. And um, I, we, there have been some very, very uh, high level, I don't wanna give any implication that anything has been done or decided or set, but there are some groups that have talked to us and we've talked to them and said, you know, we get out the other side, there may make more sense to bring us together. Um, industry and, and you as members need the most efficient way to access the resources you can get and, and not and having to work with multiple organizations is not the best. Elisa, there was one you missed and I actually would like to address it. It had to do with uh, involving um, the academia community in the organization. That That is something we are very focused on and, and frankly don't believe that in the past NACE or SSPC has done as well as it could have. And we're taking advantage of the, the merger to really strengthen that area, taking some of the resources that in the past we would have been duplicating the use of and making them available to serve what we're calling the pre-professional community. So it, it, it approaches the universities, but even younger than the universities, the, the uh, pre-university stage. But also those people who teach them, the researchers, the professors, the university professors, the instructors, to give them more resources. So we've actually got a business plan that's being developed as part of the new org that addresses specifically into that community. I think that's an important community um, that we can do a lot better at serving and, and take advantage of the merger to make that happen. Okay, uh, and then last I have one, somebody just feed and fed, or fed me some information and, um, from our staff. 
the, the, back to the question about COVID, one of the things that has happened on the NACE side, if you are carrying a NACE certification, is we are extending grace periods for certifications if for some reason you've lost your job or you're unemployed or you're struggling financially. So what I would tell anybody, and I think it would be the same on the SSPC side, if, if you're in a situation where COVID has negatively impacted you, reach out to us because uh, there are programs and things that we can make available to help with that. And I'm being told, yeah, even our cost of our education programs have been reduced and we're offering scholarships. So there are a lot of programs out there uh, for those who have a need. Okay, and then uh, one other inquiry about costs. Uh, how can costs not go up dramatically uh, re related to free downloads for members, if that'll be curtailed? Um, presumably for standards. I think it, what was touched on is that uh, like the membership model as individual members the, and or the corporate structure will be, uh, will have different tiers uh, to enable, uh, I think what Bob said earlier, which is to get the benefits that you think are valuable to you at, at whatever level that might be. So um, that's being discussed uh, actively and, and um, proposals will be forthcoming to us for the, as the transition team to review and, and approve what we think is the right direction forward. Perfect. Well, I think that's it. Let's see. Uh, unless anyone has any other questions, send them in now. Otherwise, that's everything. Uh, I, uh, please keep our news numbers intact. The lower the yeah. number, the longer others know we've been around. <laughs> um, yeah, how to how to. <laughs> how to maintain your uh, your uh, seniority number, I guess, for lack of a better term, your certification number. Um, that'll be part of the process. Well, that does bring us to the top of the hour. Uh, great feedback, great questions. Um, you know, also open to feedback about the uh, session themselves. If there's too much content, and you want more time for question and answers, uh, that's feedback that we can take and, and uh, adjust the either the length of the webinars, the length of the town halls, or adjust the length of the content that's in the, uh, that's presented. So uh, nothing's nothing sacred to the team that's that's trying to do the work and and bring this bring the two organizations together on both the staff and the and the membership side. So thanks for your participation and engagement and uh, look forward to hearing from you all again, uh, I guess in a few weeks in September. Thanks, good job, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Well, thanks for the help from everyone, getting it all together. Um, and be safe. <laughs>